look at the control of, uh, of eye movements. And, and we'll concentrate on horizontal eye movements again. So uh, the control, uh, the incoming control to the horizontal gaze center arises from two primary places. One is the superior colliculus. And the superior colliculus is taking in primarily visual information about moving targets. It doesn't take anything, uh, any information in about form or color, uh, but it takes information about location and how it's moving. And it allows us to follow those, uh, to orient towards those moving stimuli. Um, and the superior colliculus takes in the sensory information and then makes a motor plan. So the superior colliculus is a place where there is what's called a sensory motor transformation. You're taking in this sensory information and you're figuring out how you're going to move to orient towards it. And you're going to be able to make that orienting movement no matter what your starting position is. So if the, if the sensory stimulus is up here and I'm looking here, I can look up. If the sensory stimulus is, is in the same place, but I'm looking over here, I have to look even farther. But if I'm looking here, I only have to look up. Whatever the situation is, it will take my starting position, it will take my end position, it will figure out how to get from start to end. That's a sensory motor transformation. So we're going to take sensory information, sensory coordinates in, and we're going to put it into motor coordinates. And so the superior colliculus is a, is a cross, it has a, um, uh, its outflow is a track that crosses the midline. And so this superior colliculus will produce a saccade to the contralateral side. All right? So that, as you know, the lateral, uh, the horizontal gaze center on the left is going to make a leftward eye movement. So the right superior colliculus will engage the left horizontal gaze center to make a leftward saccade. Okay. The other controlling area is, it, main controlling area is the frontal eye fields, which is up in the frontal lobes in front of the, uh, of the motor strip the mo primary motor cortex, which you know doesn't control extraocular muscles. So the frontal eye field has, uh, has a connection directly to the horizontal gaze center and also a direct uh, a connection via to the horizontal gaze center via the superior colliculus. In any case, this horizontal, I mean, this frontal eye field, okay, this frontal eye field on the right will produce, excitation here will produce a leftward gaze. So the right frontal eye field will produce a leftward gaze. So if I intentionally want to look to the right, excuse me, if I intentionally want to look to the left, I will use my right frontal eye fields and make a volitional saccade to the left. Now, you can imagine that if the frontal eye fields are lesioned, and this can happen with, say, uh, a middle cerebral artery uh, stroke. If this is lesioned, I will no longer be able to look to the contralateral side. Now, as it turns out, the resting gaze is a balance between the resting activity in the, in the two sides of the frontal eye fields, the right and the left frontal eye field. And so if, I, if this is lesioned, then this side is going to be, the healthy side is going to take over. And I will end up looking to, to uh, if the right is lesioned, I will end up using the left frontal eye fields, the, the healthy frontal eye fields on the left, to look to the right. So gaze, resting gaze will be at rest, will be uh, deviated toward the affected side, toward the side with the lesion. Okay, what we're going to do now is just wrap up by uh, looking a little bit at um, uh, smooth uh, pursuit movements.